I wear my sunglasses at night. Oh, remember that song? That was the Corey Hart song. <laughs> so, uh, chilling here again with good old Mikey Rails. Hello? But he hasn't been derailing, so. No, I'm trying to stay on course. Actually. Keeping on the track. Absolutely. He's keeping you know, on the track. Off the track, you could, you know, it's only trouble. <laughs> so, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about comedy. And, I love um, comedy. And the certain landmines, <laughs> the certain landmines you can step on when it comes to comedy. And, well, at least what we knew. But comedy and the thin line. Of offense. Of offense. Yes, how some people may mistake comedy for being offensive. Which, when you think about it, comedy is supposed to be offensive, almost. You know? Yeah. That's how well, I look not, at it. Or not, not 100%. But not 100%, true. but every time you make fun of something, it's you're still making fun of it. No matter what you, it is. You know, no matter what it is, people take something seriously, and a com- comedian comes along and just, you know, makes fun of it. But the problem is, is that comedy from back in the day, compared to how it's evolved, uh, people will get more offensive now because of the way, you know, society has kind of changed or whatever. But comedy, this should be almost like a um, you can't touch comedy kind of thing. Where comedians should be almost able to say what they want without crossing the line, I guess. So, uh, when you could think of, when you think of like, Really offensive comedy. Well, here's how I look at comedy. And we'll start with what's going on right now with everybody being in an uproar about... Everything? Bill Burr, new comedy, and uh, Dave Chappelle's new comedy. Although we may not always agree with what the comedian says in general, I'm sure there's some things that you're not going to agree with, but it's still funny to laugh at. No matter what the case may be. I can laugh at myself. You can laugh at yourself. But sometimes people like look at it like, oh my God, you know, if you can't have a comedy, a comedian who's offensive, then... Then you're pretty much... You're uh, just talking... Limited with right. comedy? You're totally limited. And I, I think, for instance, if you take comedians like, uh, like I just said, Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr, who always been raunchy, but they're still keeping it the same way. Now, if you look at comedians like, you know what kind of comedian we need right now? We need a George Carlin. What would happen if George <laughs> Carlin was oh. talking about the comedy that he... You know, it, would be, it would be crazy, but George Carlin wouldn't back down. No, he, he would wouldn't. never back no, down. No, he wouldn't. He'd be, he'd he was, they'd, they'd try to crucify him, but he would not back down. He was even offensive back yeah. when he was uh, doing oh, com- yeah. comedy. Oh, yeah. You know, all the seven words that were... You know what was great about it? He mm-hmm. won't back down. Yeah, he would not back he down. He would not back down. And if somebody is a follower of the comedian, they're always going to be a follower of the comedian. George Carlin, right now, he would have so much to make fun of. I mean, tons more uh, to make he, fun he, of. He'd have so much ammo. Absolutely. I mean, you couldn't stop him. He would really tear society up the way it is right now. But, like, uh, for stand up comedians, mm-hmm. right? There's. there's uh, Stuff going on where, like, even people like Chris Rock, Jerry Seinfeld, uh-huh. where they say, they say to, they say, and let it be known that they would not play things like college campuses in, in this right. era because right, well, of the, uh, well, Chris Rock, I- I'm afraid. Touchy, touchy subjects. We haven't yes. seen. Chris Rock, but he did do a special, but he was a little tame with the special. It wasn't like back in the days, um, how it used to be. Even Eddie Murphy has a special coming out. Let's see how that's going to go. In my opinion, yes, I'm evolving with, with, with everything that's going on. And look, I don't like pedophiles and things like that, but they make fun of it. If you can't make fun of the society, then, then you know, I mean, I mean, what is there? I'm, I'm not saying make fun of murder or something like that but the comedians know what they're doing and they're pretty funny all right well my whole thing with comedy is if you can't make fun of yourself exactly how exactly. can you make fun of anything else no you're exactly right 
And, and, and uh, George Carlin, I think he was Irish, I believe. Grew up in uh, Manhattan on the Upper West Side, I think. In, uh, uh, I may make fun of a lot of people, but I make plenty of fun of myself. I'm oh, not absolutely. Saying, I'm not saying I'm a stand-up comedian and all, but in order to have a sense of humor, <laughs> in order to have a sense of humor, if you're going to dish it out, you best be ready to take it well, right back. That's a great point, but in my opinion, a lot of people who get offended by uh, these uh, these uh, comedians nowadays, maybe they don't have a sense of humor. All they do, but they're trying to pretend that they don't. I think some people have never been smacked in their lives. Well, well, that's you know, a lot of people are smacking their head for doing something <laughs> stupid. Exactly. What do you know? What do you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little too old school with. With what I'm saying right there. I'm right. surprised that George Carlin still has his own channel on Sirius XM. If you listen to some of, some of those old school stuff, he makes fun of all the sensitive subjects now. Religion, politics, everything. All races. He makes fun of his own race. All the time. Um, but you have to be able to make fun of it. I mean, that's just the way it goes. You know, take religion, for instance. There's some religions that, you know, some of the people did some bad things. You make fun of it. But they continue to survive. Everything's going good. Take, for instance... You it's know, not like a joke on a religion that's going to destroy an entire religion. It's not like a joke on an entire race that's going to destroy and like going to break the backbone of an... And if, gonna, and if somebody in that religion feels sensitive to it, maybe because if you, the truth if, hurts, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if you're going to take a joke and, and make it like your spine has been snapped, then you were a weak little bitch to be... To begin with, I'm sorry. Right, oh, absolutely. <laughs> First of all, I mean, comedy nowadays, unless it's like G-rated comedy, it's not going to be funny. You know, unless you have comedy that when a guy comes up, he goes, what did the um, what did the em envelope say to the stamp or whatever? A stick with me and we'll go places or whatever. I mean, you don't have comedy like that. You have to have up-to-date, <laughs> yeah. up-to-date, uh, current event, raunchy comedy. Take another, take another, um, Great comic you saw back in the days. Remember the Queen of Mean, Lisa Lampanelli? Lisa Lampanelli used to make fun of... I was never a fan of Lisa Lampanelli. I kind of was. She really was hardcore. She was, And she realized what was going on. I don't know if you noticed, but she's actually changed into becoming a life coach. She went from going from... A life coach? She's a life coach now, Chris. Yes, life coach. So she doesn't do... Stand no, up no stand-up anymore, because she realizes that... Her stand-up right now will get a lot of criticism. In fact, people are not going to like it because she made fun of all kinds of races. I'm not going to get into that. Oh, them. she did. I just particularly never found it funny. But she was, you know what I'm saying? She was a great example of, of a, a, a perfect comedian. You know, if you are going to rip on other people, uh -huh. take it back. Then, oh, then absolutely. You best be able to take them bullets. Yeah. And uh, you look at comedy also, something that I was thinking about also is that, um, which we may have talked about in the past, was pretty much like you take uh, Eddie Murphy, which I talked about, and he had a good thing. It's either Raw or Delirious, which they were both great shows. They made fun of, you know, all kinds of agendas and everything like that. But he was true to what he said. Now you look at a person who, who was a, one of the biggest comedians back in the day that had the number one show on TV, Chris. Number one show, America's Dad. Who was America's Dad? Who was America's Dad? <laughs> My wife, Camille. And what ended up happening? He ended oh. up being one of the... Oh, just, uh, you know... Just a Google roofies, it. roofling. Just, just Google it. <laughs> he, he pretty much he you know he, you know he made the complaint to, to Eddie Murphy because he used. Uh, We're not gonna explain that whole situation right now. Well, but, I think uh, I think pretty much you know what you know about uh, Bill Cosby, but that's a comedian who everybody loved. But then we actually find out, oh, he was doing some bad things. Mm -hmm. It's not alleged. He's actually serving time. All right, fine. A lot of these comedians now they don't do bad things. They just talk about things that are done in, in a humorous way. But also. Okay. Uh, the type of stuff we would see stuff coming out of uh, the type of stuff we would see coming out of uh, the mouths of like <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. Oh. Like. Uh, 
he was huge in the late eighties. Like his Well he was the whole sex his whole thing was being sexist. That was his whole thing about treating women like dirt. Oh dirty. yeah. Right. And he has a comedy tour coming out with Roseanne Ball right now. But I knew plenty of women who actually were able to laugh. A lot of women were, were, were the, sitting front row. And they were in the audience, but like there were women I knew where we could listen to a tape of Andrew Dice Clay or watch a comedy special of Andrew Dice Clay and they would laugh. <laughs> they would laugh because uh, you didn't have to tiptoe around so many minefields. It's now comedy right now. It's 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 a minefield that you have to tiptoe around. Right, right. You step in that mine, you're done. One, one mind yeah. and your whole comedy career is blown to smithereens and your body is exploded. But it is more the of the fact that in their personal life, if they step on that mind, take Louis C.K. for instance. In his personal life, he did some really uh, yeah. raunchy oh, stuff, yeah. Yeah. and now he's good, kind of being good, ostracized. Good point right there. Good but point. you don't see Bill Burr or even Dave Chappelle doing things like that, you know, but they can actually make fun of it. If Louis C.K. comes and starts making fun of that same kind of humor, nobody's going to like it because he really did it. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's it, it, like you said, it's a thin line between quantity. Well, you think if he makes fun of himself about doing it, you think well, he's he going to redeem himself? That's going like to be a, his whole If act. he does like a Netflix special Absolutely. where he does it. Oh, I know, I know. Mean, it's a band in front of a you know, that, That's going to be his whole act. He's going to, you know, he's going to talk about how the band is ending. Oh, he oh, oh, you can call it that too. Redemption. Yeah, redemption. <laughs> exactly. But a lot of these com- comedians, like, you know. Oh, my God. Like the Bill Burr special. And even back in the days when he said, oh, he talks about, oh, uh, why, uh, well, why do they, why do, you know, why is it that uh, the women want to know why they're not equal to men? This is his words. He goes, well, when the Titanic is, sh- is sinking, why is it always women and children that get off first? Oh, why is when the building's on fire, they're acting like I'm not flammable? <laughs> you know, like things like that, which are true statements. But, it, you know, some people get, you know, get offended But by some it. people actually still make careers out of it, and some people aren't allowed to do it anymore. Well, it all depends on the platform that you're on. If you're on a Netflix or something like that, and they take a lot of heat from the, from the sponsors or from people, they're going to ax it. But pretty much a comedian... If I watch Bill Burr, I know what I'm getting into. You know what you're getting into when you watch a comedian. Yeah. If you watch Bill Burr, or they don't know who Bill Chris Burr Rock. is. Well, that's another thing, right? If you don't know who Bill Burr is and you go sit front row, or, or even or Andrew S. Clay, if you don't know what he's into, then you know there's going to be some big trouble. I mean, he used to really degrade oh, he would. He wouldn't just degrade women. He he'd pick a dude out in the front row. Oh yeah. He'd pick a dude out in the front row of his crowd and spend five minutes just ripping that dude apart. Yeah. And they would have the camera on the guy. The guy would be laughing his ass off. And then the guy stayed. There, do you remember though? There were oh, certain yeah. people who he would cut into, cut them to ribbons, and they'd be laughing their asses off about it. They weren't like, mm-hmm. they weren't sitting there with their arms folded. Going, Huh, huh, he's defending me. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, no, you're totally right. In fact, a lot of people want to be ripped into. That's people like, used to be able to take it on the chin. Now we're not we're not in that era anymore. People used to be able to take jokes in stride. But when you think about it, if you can't make fun of things and there's no comedy, then then, then what are you gonna what do? What is there? I mean, what's then going what on? There's no do? laughter anymore. Are you going to live your day without laughter? Yeah, and it, it it just doesn't make any sense. I can make fun of myself all the time. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying I'm making fun of people. I'm just making fun of the whole society in general, which is what Bill Burr does, and which is what Dave Chappelle did, and. Um, you know, they, look, they did a good job, and, and I like the job that they did with it. And Chris Rock did a great job back in the days, too. George Carlin might be the most controversial, and also uh, and Lisa Nepinelli. But then you have your comedians that are very, you know, straightforward. But they're not even that funny, you, you know. I used to hate the musician comedians. When oh. Everyone- when there was a point where every every comedian like would come Dimitri out with, something, every comedian would come Dimitri. out with a guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. They actually have a um um a documentary on the amazing Jonathan. 
Who? Uh, you know what? I liked him. He was funny. Yeah, he was funny. He was a maniac. He was like a ventriloquist type, right? Uh, uh, he did a bunch of stupid stuff. He would do that thing with the pencil. Who was the crazy guy that used to smash watermelons? Gallagher. Gallagher, right, right, right. You know, a yeah, comedy so like that. That would be offensive to, like... These days, that would be offensive to people who are trying to protect watermelons. Oh, I love watermelons. They're not even in season, right. and you're bashing them. Stop killing wa- Stop, stop killing, killing the watermelons. Stop killing our watermelons. Hashtag, please. save the watermelons. Hashtag, cancel Gallagher. But... People that really don't like that kind of comedy, what actually is going to give them humor and laughter? I, I just don't know. What they make fun of? Like, dogs? Or you can even talk about TV shows. TV shows, yes. That you... Cer- certain TV shows that you wouldn't be able to, like... Alright. Like we were talking about before, Married with Children. Married with Children. Uh, Love that show. <laughs> TV shows the writing like, was great. TV shows like Married with Children would really have a hard time being made today. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he called Marcy a chicken in every episode. I mean, granted, <laughs> the jokes were going back and forth between men and women. Well, well, that was the whole thing. He was getting crucified in every single uh, episode. Oh, he was just... Peg, Peggy ran the household. But ev- th- he was another one, like I said in our video before about TV... He was just like Archie Bunker. He would make fun of people, and everyone would sit there and rip on him right to his face, cut him to, cut him to ribbons. Like they wouldn't care about what they said to him. I bet even shoe salesmen were laughing at that. Oh, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that jo- that show, I'm pretty sure that show made a lot of shoe salesmen very very upset with their own lives and the, the stigma that came with Al Bundy. Yeah, and if you put it on now, it looks like oh, all Peggy does is eat bonbons and watch Oprah. Like she's supposed to be home all day cleaning and cooking. But he tried to tell her to get out and get a job. He would tell her all the time, go yeah. get a job. Oh, yeah. But she wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> but you know, not, not even like that. Uh-huh. I'm talking about like all the sexual jokes they had. All the things that Al like drooling over the hot women on the show and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, like, he was major sexist you, you in that show. You can't really, you can't really have, you can't even have stuff like that on network TV these days. But even though there are people out there that do that, they'll drool over hot women and yeah. But nowadays it's like oh, it's so proper that a husband can't even look at another woman or else you know. But Al didn't give a crap. It, it was a good show, but you're right though. Would that show be able to get past the season or even? Three episodes now. Who knows? Without a bunch of complaints. Right, without a bunch of complaints. and Probably that, not. Eh, probably yeah, not. Yeah, probably not. And I'm not talking about if they did a reboot of Married with Children. I'm talking about, say, that show never came out and they tried to put it out today. <laughs> say that show never came out in the late 80s and they <laughs> tried to put that show out today. No way. And it all comes down to comedy, though. It's all it's all comedy. It's and a that, landmine. Wow. Well, yeah, Married with Children it's was a, mind a, huge, field. a huge landmine. It's they, a minefield. You know, what, does everybody, does everybody want to see shows like, uh, well, like, what was a very family wholesome show? Well, like, uh, like, uh, what, uh, well, like, fr- like, from way back? Like, a really, yeah, like, back in the day, wholesome show, which would, would survive now. I don't even know, because all those shows still had their, their They sp- did have the innuendos, right. Not right. even the innuendos, but they had, like, special... What they used to call back in the special episodes. Where Alex P. Keaton is, is right taking drugs to study for tests. Every show is going to be like a One Tree Hill <laughs> or, or some kind of family-friendly show where, you know, it's just pretty much the same old stuff. I think, I think deep down a lot of people want, you know, shows like that. It's just that in today's society and the way it's portrayed is bad. The offense. Yeah, it, it, it's offensive to everybody. The offenseometer is... Ready to, to, to burst and... I'll be honest with you. I never got offensive to anything really, uh, you know, in my life. Like, even if I watch a show, you know, a part of my background is Greek. If I see a show and make it fun of Greeks, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to get pissed off. If, if, if it's funny, it's funny. I don't, I don't care. Oh, man. The Simpsons, come on. They, they're just fat Tony in general. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm this, part, right. I'm part Italian. They used to make fun of the... I remember there was an episode of The Simpsons. Where Homer is on a flute and he's expecting to like get assassinated by somebody, <laughs> and he hears a gunshot, and then he looks to the side while he's on the flute, 
and it's Fat Tony and his goons shooting someone. And Homer goes, oh, it's just Italians. <laughs> I, I laugh my ass off at that. Yeah, it's, I didn't it's just care. Italian. We're just Italians being Italians. <laughs> yeah. I didn't care about that. I didn't. I wasn't writing letters to Fox saying, like, take that You know that what's funny? Do you think, you think that, that um, producers could get away more with cartoons being offensive than actual real shows? Like, Simpsons was offensive for a while. I haven't watched it recently. But if they were still offensive... And also, like, Simpsons is so offensive to old people, too. Oh, absolutely. How they put the, the father in the home and... They were just so offensive. No, even, not even that they put him in the home, just the way he acted when he came out of it. <laughs> like, hey. And Simpsons was another one where the, where the father was just a real idiot. He was like the Al Bundy type. Oh, like so many shows where yeah. the father was an and idiot. And that's another thing. That's another thing, too. The Do fathers so, get pissed off when they see that? Exactly. Probably not. So many shows where the father was a complete moron. They would always make the father a moron. Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody really, cared. Yeah, nobody really cared. But for, for some reason now, everything has to be proper. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. Where's it going to go? Like we talked about. Who, who knows it's where gonna it's going to go? <laughs> it's going to be so, like, you can't say an offensive word. But I just hope that the whole Dave Chappelle and Bill Burrow special, because those are the two specials now that got everybody on edge. I just hope that, you know, it, it just keeps going. And I want to see how Eddie Murphy does it. Eddie Murphy is going to host the SNL uh, season finale of the new season. Eddie Murphy's going to do it. And I want to see what kind of skit. Remember the Buckwheat skit? No, no. It was the Mr. Rogers thing, right? It was the whole, it was the same thing, right? Buckwheat and Mr. Rogers was the Remember, he used to, what's today's word of the day? And they would actually use the N-word, which was crazy. What's today's word of the day, kids? No, the buckwheat one was different. The buckwheat one was different. I know the one you're talking about, the other one you're talking about. But the buckwheat one was different. But what, what, what is he, he's hosting? Yeah, he's hosting. He hasn't been there for 35 years. After he split from SNL and Lord Michaels... He Michael's, never even came back. He never came I, back. In fact, wow. Adam Sandler recently came back. We saw that episode. Very funny episode. He won an Emmy for it recently. But no, Eddie Murphy has never come back since then. Never came back. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Because, you know, everybody doesn't want to be offensive nowadays, but... You know, I'm not saying being offensive is funny, but it kind of is. It, it kind, kind of is. is. You can make fun of anything in the world. It kind of is. And if you have a thick skin, you should be able to take it. Especially yeah. if you're a comedian yourself. First off, if you're a comedian yourself, you should have a thick skin. You should not be a weak little wet paper towel bitch. And Who gets offended by every single thing that they say. Yeah, it, no, it, it is just weird though, but uh, I hope that comedy, because look, Growing up, we all loved comedy. The comedy show that Comedy Central used to have the shows. Uh, HBO was the big comedy. Now it's Netflix now. HBO used and to be. And if you and your friends never sat there and made fun of each other, I'm going to call you a bunch of liars. That's another thing, too. If you make fun of somebody else, that means you could listen if to the comedy. If you never sat there and had a rip session with you and your friends, you're a liar. A, a hypocrite. Oh, a hypocrite. Well, You're a liar, a hypocrite, yes. A liar, yes. whatever. Because everybody, I mean, we, we, you know, people made fun of their closest friends. And, you know, I got made fun of my whole life, and I just laughed at it. Cause Me I and you stay it. ripping on each other. Yeah, and I got ripped on. So I, Not I, a lot on video. <laughs> Man, I'm going to have to start ripping on you, so. You, yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> All right, so... I just wanted to get into this topic about um, having the a walk. The thin line between comedy and all, uh, offensiveness. Having to walk on eggshells these days. And it'll be good to, to hear some responses from people. Do when people get offended? Make, when it comes to making jokes, you shouldn't have to walk on eggshells these days. Unless you're, tr uh, unless you're being truly hateful. Because some people really... Alright, you also got to admit. Some people really do make their things truly hateful. And they you know, they will say things. But a joke is a joke. A joke is a joke. And I hope you don't get offended, Chris. But it is like nighttime, and there's no reason for you to be wearing those glasses. And I was just wondering. <laughs> All right, everybody. Why you wear the sunglasses at night? <laughs> what about that? Are you Peace offended? Out. Are you offended? <laughs> Copyright strike.